Well, looky what we have here. This is a 2019 Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled, and yours truly, being a Harley rider, an Indian rider, a cruiser rider, is gonna take this bike out, and I'm gonna tell you what I think about it from the eyes of a road glide, street glide owner, a chieftain, challenger. Those are the types of bikes that I truly, really love, but my job as a reviewer is to bring you all types of motorcycles, and that's why I'm doing this one right here. Now, if you are a Ducati purist, and any negative thing that I say about this bike, you take so much offense to it that it's almost like I slapped your mom or something like that, this review is not for you. But if you can handle the good with the bad as I see it, pros and cons, and I'm gonna be totally fair to this motorcycle like I am all motorcycles, then this review may be for you, man. If this is your first time stopping by, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit new notifications so you never miss a video from me. Let me go ahead and attempt to swing a leg over this bike. Let's check it out. So a couple of things about the bike before we actually get on it and ride it. This is an 803cc, again, I could be totally wrong, adventure touring, maybe not, maybe off-road, on-road type of motorcycle. Either way, 803cc's air-cooled motor. What's kind of cool is you have these interchangeable uh, aluminum side covers, right? So that's pretty cool, 3.5 gallon tank. This thing is in the neighborhood of like 460 pounds with all the fluids in it, of course. Dual cornering ABS, which is made by Bosch. And then you have, what's interesting is you have LEDs pretty much all the way around. You have an LED headlight ring, but you have a halogen main headlight bulb. I think they've upgraded them for the new, new ones where they're all LED. Now, the previous owner of this one put his LED turn signals in the actual handguards here, so that's kind of a clean look right there. He also upgraded the exhaust, and I think he relocated the, uh, the license plate holder, which I, I would imagine a lot of people do. Most of the ones that come on these types of bikes, hell, even some of the, the Harleys, like the, uh, what was it, the FXR or the FXDR, whatever that kind of, uh, uh, racing Harley, if you will, type of bike was, they come with these big extended rear license plate holders that most people will actually replace those. But it's a good looking bike. And that's the first thing I notice when, I'm, when, I, when I stand back and I actually look at this thing, I'm a fan of red. So it just, it, it's kind of a joke, like red makes everything faster. And although this thing is like 75 horsepower, 50 foot pounds of torque, I don't know that there's anything fast about this motorcycle, but we're, we're gonna find that out, of course. But the bike looks really good. So I always like to give y'all a mix of specs and how the bike makes me feel. So you can find out more about this thing. And like I said, I don't know everything about it. It has a, and I'm bound to mess this up, Kayaba rear suspension, fully adjustable rear suspension. Kayuba, Kayaba, something like that fully adjustable preload. You do have a, a, a non-split full driver and passenger seat. And just doing a little bit of research, this is also good even if you don't have a passenger, if you're doing more technical stuff off-road or whatever the case may be. Really nice, it has that Ducati kind of badge in the rear with the uh, red, orange looking stitching right here. Extended rear fender, high front fender to keep the mud and the dirt and all that kind of stuff off. It also has these bash protectors, so that's gonna essentially you know, keep your engine safe in case you drop it on off-road terrain or whatever the case may be. Six-speed transmission. It does come with removable foot pegs for your passenger. You have controls all on the handlebars. We'll talk about more of that whenever we get on the road. Offset cluster to the right of the little mini windshield fairing type of thing there. Hand guards, of course, and all that. So. Rocking the Pirelli Rallies tires too, by the way, 19 and a 17, respectively front and rear. Dual swing arms, aluminum swing arms. So that's pretty much all the specs on here. Red exoskeleton looks, looks awesome, actually. Uh, it looks like you have a little bit of an exhaust cover right here to protect your leg from getting burnt. So let's go ahead and hop on this thing and check out the Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled. So I'm not going to say I'm intimidated by this bike, because I'm really not. I'm more intimidated by the height. 33.9 inches, I believe. You can get a 33-inch seat. Either way, I'm 5'7", 5'8 on a good day, and I have no idea oh, how the heck I'm going to 
do it. I guess I'm going to do it just like that. Okay, well, it wasn't as bad as I was thinking, honestly. So, uh, no way I'm flat footing this motorcycle. Here's our key. I'm literally on my tippy toes right now. <laughs> if y'all could see this, that would, that would be probably pretty funny. All right. Kickstands up, boys. All right, so our starting process is pretty straightforward. I think we just rotate this down. There we go. Saw sounds good. So you can flash our high beam right here. This little green light signals the LED light in the front, by the way. You have some options here. I'm not a fan of this menu. Um, turn signal. Let's see. You can turn that off or on. A little wimpy horn. <laughs> uh, well, I know you can get in the mode. Here's your range settings. Gotcha. So you go into the settings, then you select whatever you want. You got journey mode. Pin, clock, date, uh, service info, backlight, automatically on, high, medium, low, auto. Uh, daylight control, daylight running light control. Battery units turn indicators what is turn indicators like automatically off rpm gauge and again the riding modes so you got journey you got off-road mode and that's it okay cool we're gonna journey on the asphalt today so i'll keep it in journey mode that pretty much makes sense all right and y'all didn't think we were gonna go off-road she look yeah yeah, buddy. That's about the extent of it, though, unfortunately. Maybe a little bit here. All right. Ducati Desert Sled Cool looking bike man way outside of my wheelhouse, but that's the idea To give a new perspective a Harley's riders perspective on a bike like this So what I'm looking for man is the things I'm always looking for you know how comfortable is it? Uh, you know, but I gotta I, I have to also realize what this bike is for it's got a, a very specific purpose uh, and riding style it's set up to to do a lot of off-road stuff but it allows you to ride your bike and get there so you don't really have to trailer the bike if you don't want to so you know there's that I'm gonna keep that in the back of my head too what this bike is actually for and who it's for fourth gear right now Ooh, fifth gear look it feels like it kind of like it wants to be in that fourth gear or something going 55 it's honestly not too not too uncomfortable you know I mean the seat is definitely firm uh, my, my positioning I'm a little bit forward the bottom of my back my lower back is hunched just a little bit and my arms are kind of slightly stretched and it is a cooler day here in the south man we got a uh, hurricane Ian coming through Florida and then it's gonna be visiting us in Georgia here in the next couple of days so I'm gonna take advantage of this weather dude I am so serious. And this 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 has been kind of a common theme over the past few years. We'll get a hurricane like late September, early October, and it always brings this really nice weather. 
we haven't been directly impacted, but we'll get, like, we got skirted with one a few years ago. I think that was Matthew, and we've had some scares over the past few years, but we've been very lucky here in South Carolina, at least. So, uh, regardless, though, the cooler weather is much appreciated. It was a brutal summer, and maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but it feels like the summers are way worse. Like, every year, it's hotter and hotter and hotter, but anyways, I digress. So the way this thing rides on the road, I was expecting a little bit more like vibration, you know, from these tires, maybe a little bit more uncomfortable. I really don't feel any of that. I mean, I mean, there's some, don't get me wrong, but these tires seem to do a pretty good job of just kind of cruising along. So I don't, I don't know, that's actually not too bad. My feet are right on underneath me, of course, you know, like a mid position. Um, and I feel like with the way the seating position is set up, like if you really like need to get into it off road or, you know, center of gravity or whatever, you know, I feel like it would be a good position for that. 3.5 gallon tank. So if you do need to take this on a trip somewhere, you're going to, you know, I don't know, the, the hills or, you know, wherever you do your off roading. Uh, you have a pretty decent range on the bike already. So that's that's obviously a, a, a good thing <laughs> Look at my feet right here Like literally I'm like tilting the bike to one side So I can actually stabilize it like the other foot is just up off the ground. Well, eh, whatever Super lightweight motorcycle super lightweight So that's kind of, I guess, where the 75 horsepower isn't such a bad thing. It sounds pretty light, but you know, 460 pounds isn't that heavy either. So it's got a, it's got a decent get up and go, I guess you could say. You got like this little headlight grill in there, you know, everything's kind of designed to protect the bike in a crash, again, for off-road. I do want to see what the suspension feels like on these on these uh, roads. There's no lack of bad roads here in South Carolina, that's for sure. Kind of get an idea. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right, gotta turn. So doing some research on this thing, I guess they got the name from Steve McQueen's motorcycle in the 60s, which is kind of cool. You know, the desert sled. This thing is uh, is, is not too bad. I kind of want to stand up on these pegs and just get an idea of what those guys, yeah, because that's, that's how people ride these things off-road, you know, especially if you have some, um, you know, some, some really bad humps and trails and, you know, what again, I don't claim to know everything about that. I don't know much of any of it, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, there's that. So who is this bike for? I think it's pretty obvious, man. If you're somebody that wants to ride to your destination while you're doing your off-roading, this would be a good bike for that. If you don't want to trailer it, you want to have enough power to get to your destination. Maybe you and your buddies take a, take a road trip you know, you all kind of have all these adventure touring bikes and dual sports or what, whatever the heck they're classified as. Then I think that's good. Now, the only other thing that I have to compare this to is the Pan America from Harley, which I want to say had 150 horsepower. I mean, so when I look at something like this, I'm thinking newer rider, you know, newer to the adventure touring scene maybe a second bike because you got to think this thing's like what 11.5 uh pan america is 20 so almost double the price so you're also going to save some money there as well but i would say a newer rider somebody that's not as used to it you're still going to get a good amount of power out that 800 but it's not going to be overkill and it's not going to be 
like it, it, you know if you have no experience and you get on the pan the pan america has some power dude i rode that bike and i'm telling you that thing man it it it's pretty wicked fast for for what it is uh that revolution uh revolution max motor is is pretty insane but No slouch either though man because it's, it's so freaking lightweight dude it's kind of fun i'm having a pretty good time i'm really surprised that i'm having well not really because i had fun on the pan america too it, it was just a fun all-around type of motorcycle you know so if you're new to this world you're new to riding maybe all your buddies do adventure touring and off-roading and you want something like this i i could probably see this being a good option you're not going to get in so much trouble as long as you know who you are and that you can you know learn the basics and learn the fundamentals and you know kind of take it easy for a while before you start going crazy and what whatever i think this could be a good starting motorcycle for somebody that's looking to do that a second motorcycle if your main bike is a street bike and uh, you know you want something to, to hit the dirt with as well then you can do that six-speed transmission so if you're on the highway it's not gonna beat you up it's not gonna vibrate you to death and chatter your teeth out of your head so that's good too you know this thing seems to have a lot of great features man that I that I really dig dude now, would I be comfortable on this on a long road trip? Absolutely not. My back would be screaming after probably 50 miles, if I'm being honest. Um, Jesus. Uh, the maneuverability on the bike is good, as you just seen. Freaking post office workers, like, dude. Thank you guys for what you do, but that was a little dumb. Anyways. You know, I don't know if guys ride these, you know, maybe a commuting motorcycle. I don't know about with these tires on it. Seems kind of like a waste maybe, but uh, maybe that's an option for you as well. I, I don't really, I don't really know, you know. And I'm sure there's accessories. You could probably put bags on these things. That's one thing that's nice about the Pan America the KTM, which is why I think this is not necessarily an adventure touring bike. I'm, I'm sure they have a name for it, and I'm not trying to sound like a dumbass here. So if you're like, dude, it's a freaking blah, 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 whatever. Okay, uh, okay, just just leave it down below, and I'll, I'll remember it for next time. But the adventure touring bikes like the KTMs and stuff, and the, and the Pan America, of course, have bags, you know, or the ability to add the bags this one may it may not again you ducati guys help me out here man we're all a uh we're all one big happy community and you know if you if you know something more than i do which you probably do at least on these motorcycles eh, leave it down below that's what the community is here for so i'm sure you can accessorize to your heart's desire this thing has a lot of cool features. I'm not a fan of them doing just the LED ring. Why do they didn't just go the extra step and put the LED in? Like, come on, man. You know, especially on a bike like this, you got a small profile. You're a really small profile on a bike like this. The more lights, the better. I know guys will do integrated turn signals and you know especially on sport bikes and probably bikes like this try to clean up the aesthetics but man you know people see you quicker than they're going to hear you uh in a lot of cases now i'm not saying exhaust isn't important but what i am saying is a balance of the two exhaust and good lighting that's something i would upgrade right off the rip This seat again, it's 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 built for a purpose. There's probably way more comfortable seats you could get on this thing. Even if you are doing off-road, I'd probably upgrade the seat. This thing is pretty damn firm. 
uh, I don't know that I would mess with the foot pegs and stuff on this bike, man. Maybe, maybe a little bit wider, but again, if I buy this thing, I have the intentions of going off-road, and I don't want a big floorboard. You know, that would be ridiculous, but I don't want anything too big on the bike that's going to impede my performance off-road, okay? So I think balancing this bike with some comfortable on-road accessories the brakes work pretty good too it's only a single uh, uh disc caliber up there but it's a brembo it's a four piston brembo caliber but it's a single disc balancing the on-road comfort aspect of it with the off-road capabilities man I'm really impressed with it. it it's it's not something I would have as an only bike but it's something I would consider now me personally if Ducati makes something so here's where I'm at with it if Ducati makes them and I'm sure they do I'm sure they do Ducati makes something that's in the 125 horsepower range it has bags you know, things like that. So I would rather go with something like that. The Pan America, the KTMs. That's more my style because it still gives me the ability to carry my stuff around. This is just a little bit too limited in storage capacity, as it is anyways. Uh, so there's that. So I would rather go with something like the KTMs or the Pan America that has those bags. Let's shut this thing off. That's just me personally. Still has the ability to go off-road, but you still get the functionality out of your bags. Oh, there we go. Got off of it. But man, what a fun motorcycle. I mean, really, this thing, it looks good. It rides good. The tires did a good job. Not too, not too bouncy of a ride you know i was kind of expecting that and i wanted to come into this with an open mind which i have by the way you have these little shields here again to protect with you know damaging your forks and stuff it's really built it seems like really really well and very purpose specific motorcycle so that's kind of where i'm at with it if i if i want a very specific type of bike like this i think this is a great option i like to get a little bit more out of my for my money if you will so again a ktm pan america there may be a ducati out there that i have no idea exists that has more like the adventure touring with the bags i don't see provision to add it here of course you have the little handles here there may be one of those. So a little bit light on power, good for new riders, good for maybe returning that want to get into something like this. The Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled. I mean, it's not for me, not for me personally, but uh, if I had FU money <laughs> and I had my own land and I'm like, dude, you know, I want a badass off-road dirt bike type of thing one of these would be in my garage amongst other things of course so that's it man love to hear Ducati owners dude what do you think about the review from a Harley owner it was just on the asphalt I admit it didn't hit the dirt well we did kind of in the beginning if that counts which it really doesn't I'm just kidding but uh, let me know what you think about the review if you're new here and you like what I do consider subscribing hit your notifications so you don't miss any videos from me and if you like to support what i do you can become a patreon member for one dollar a month thank you guys see you in the next one and as always hold the rubber side down